What is photography? What is a photograph? What is it that makes you a photographer? These questions seem simple enough, but how we answer them is the first step in creating a deeper understanding of the craft that we are so passionate about. If you want to dive into the details and intricacies of a medium that is as much science as it is art, then keep watching. Okay, now before we answer these important questions, let me start by describing my vision for this channel. My goal for this channel is to provide a scientific context to the art of photography. I strongly believe that having an understanding of the theory, physics, and math behind photography gives you a deeper appreciation for the art. Better yet, knowing the science of photography gives you an awareness of what rules you can bend and twist to make your artistic vision come to life and when it is appropriate to do so. Spoiler alert, there's a right and wrong time to use things like HDR. Photography is a challenge. It's a challenge to transform the vision in your mind of the world around you into a photograph using the tools at your disposal. With the right knowledge and tools, you can achieve your goals, and let's face it, nothing is better than capturing that decisive moment. So let's get to the questions. What is photography? That seems like an easy enough question to answer, right? You've probably heard that the word photography comes from photo, which means light, and graphy, which means writing. So literally speaking, photography is writing with light. But photography is much more than its literal definition, and I like to define photography much more carefully. For me personally, I define photography as the scientific and artistic process by which energy is recorded and transformed into a tangible print. Now, I chose those words very carefully, and let me explain why. When I say energy, I'm mostly dealing with visible light because that's what we see and perceive naturally. But there are other types of energy, like light in the infrared spectrum, which we can't naturally see, but we can use photography to capture, and it gives us some stunning results. During the recording phase, we can use chemical processes like the ones found in film, or electrical signals like you're probably more familiar with on your digital sensors. And lastly, when I talk about processing tangible prints, this is really the most important part of my definition, and it helps to answer our second question of what is a photograph? A photograph is the end result of the photographic process. It is the tangible print. And the key here is tangible. I can't stress this enough. It's not a photograph if it's not a print. What you see on the back of your LCD screen on your camera, or what you scroll through on your Instagram feed, or even the latest edit on your laptop are captures, images, or pictures. They're not photographs. This is a photograph. These are photographs. Just like this roll of negatives wouldn't be considered photographs, neither are the images on this. Even if you scan these negatives or transfer these files onto your computer, edit them, and upload them to social media, they're still not photographs. Now you may be thinking that I'm being a little strict with my definition, a little harsh, but let me explain why it's important to me to make this distinction and why it should be important to you as well. As an artist, you need to control the end result of your hard work. When you put your work out there for the world to see digitally, you have little to no control as to how it's viewed by the general public. If someone is viewing your picture digitally, how are they viewing it? On a phone, a tablet, a laptop? How big is the screen? What resolution are they viewing it at? How far away from the screen are they when they're looking at it? Are the colors correct? The variables go on and on. In contrast, when you make a print, a tangible photograph, you as the artist are making a conscious decision on how people will view your work. You control the color correction. You control the type of paper it's printed on. You control the size of the print. Every little detail is under your control. You can even choose to have it matted and framed. You take ownership of the creative process from beginning to end. Now, before you go crazy and start yelling at me in the comments, I never said there's anything wrong with sharing your work digitally. In fact, I encourage it. It's a great way to reach more people than you could ever imagine. All I want you to do is not call them photographs. The language we use is so important because even from its humble beginnings, photography has struggled to be taken seriously as an art form. If we hold ourselves to a higher standard as photographers, it raises the bar 
for all photographers. This brings us to our last question. What is a photographer? If you pursue photography with the intent of producing photographs, real photographs, tangible prints, and you follow through with this intent, then you are a photographer. That's all there is to it, plain and simple. Get out there, capture images, and make real photographs. Well, wait, what makes you a great photographer? With today's advancements in technology, it's easier than ever to go out, capture an image, and then make a print, make a photograph. But if you want to improve your skills, you need to have it respect and understanding of the science behind the art. If you want to learn and grow as a photographer, please consider subscribing to this channel. Click the bell to enable notifications, hit the like button if you like this video, and leave your constructive criticisms and comments down below. I plan on releasing a new video each week, and there's a lot to cover, a lot to learn, and a lot to practice. I'll see you next week, and until then, happy shooting.